Hello there everyone, I'm Christina at CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this beaded four strand braid wire work necklace and this is the one that I made here using these materials. So I chose to use silver wire and then combining that with these purple banded agate gemstone beads to give a nice contrast between each other. And this is what it looks like. So what we do is we add our beads only on one side of the braid here to really achieve a natural curve in it. So it's going to lay nice on the neckline and look like this. And I just finish off the ends using these ribbon ends so we can attach whatever kind of chain that we want to and obviously a clasp as well. Now previously I have made a bracelet also using the same technique but obviously here I'm just adding beads on both sides. And then I've also made a pair of earrings that look like this here. So if you want to, you can easily make a set from this now. I'm going to have links to these tutorials for the bracelet and the earrings in the description box below. They're already available. But if you want to learn how to make the necklace, then keep watching. So these are the materials that we're going to need. First of all, the wire that I'm using is a 1mm regular round silver coated copper wire. So it's going to be nice and strong for the braid. And then the beads I'm using to add into the braid are these 6mm rounds, the faceted purple banded agate gemstone beads, but obviously you can use whatever kind you want to. And then to finish off the ends of the braid, I'm using these ribbon ends here, so we're going to have one for either end. Because to them we can then attach our chain and whatever kind of chain that you prefer to use, and also findings using the jump rings here. So I've got a loft or clasp and extended chain, obviously you can choose whatever kind of clasp that you prefer. So do check out the description box below the video, there's going to be the material list written out and links as well. So otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. So then the lengths of wires that we'll need is four lengths here of about 25 centimeters each. Then what I've done is towards one end of all the wires, I've just put them into the spring clamp to hold them securely in place so it's not going to be moving all over the place when we start braiding. So then to start braiding here, first of all, I want to make a little section of just the braid with the wire before we add in any beads, just so we have that little end of it there that we can use to finish off with. Then what I'm going to do is just separate my wires out a little bit. So just split them down the middle, two a little bit more towards one side and the other two towards the other side, just where they're coming out from already. So we have this space in the middle to kind of make our braid in. So then what we need to do is start from the outside on both sides at the same time and then bring them in towards the middle, but we just need to do it in a certain order. So I'm just going to take my right one here. What I like to do is just push the next one in down just a little bit, so they're kind of apart from each other, and then take the right one of those two over that one and in towards the middle. Now you might find it's a little bit fiddly here in the beginning because the wires are still moving around a bit, even though they're still attached obviously to that spring clamp. They're still kind of just not braided yet, so becomes much easier when we have a few stitches in place. So now this lies in the middle. Then on the other side, I'm gonna take the outer wire, so the furthest left one, and it needs to go underneath the next one. So I'm just gonna actually lift the second one in up a little bit, so again, split them apart, and then bring that into the middle, underneath it there. Now these two in the middle need to cross over and under each other as well, but opposite to where they were crossing over or under previously. So that means my right one, that's going over, the other one, that needs to come under in the middle, and the left one there went under on this side, so that needs to go over the other one. That just means in the middle here, I'm just bringing them over and under each other in that way. So each wire lies opposite, crosses over under opposite than they did on the outer edges. So just like that. So this is basically one first little stitch, and we now just want to keep going like this. So again, I have my two lengths coming kind of at an angle up towards either side and then it doesn't matter what side you start with but I usually tend to start with the right one the second one in I just like to push down a bit like I mentioned just to get the braid a bit tighter so like that doesn't have to do too much because obviously we need space for the beads anyway then the outer one I bring over it because on this side I'm bringing it over every time into the middle whereas on the other side I bring it under I'm just lifting up the second wire in a little bit and then bringing the outer one under it and then I might as well bring it over the middle one straight away so we cross them over and under each other as well and then you just flatten it all out and then you just if you need to reposition any wires you can do that do that while you're in this stitch before moving on to the next one so you can see that's now another one and we'll basically just keep going like this just for a couple of rounds and then we're going to start adding in the beads. 
So now I've got the braid going here, so I have a short little length. And also by doing these few stitches before adding beads and it gives you a chance to kind of find your rhythm and how to work best with the wire to create the braid. But then to add in beads, again, this doesn't matter whether you do it on the right or the left side, whatever comes natural to you, but just stick to the one side. So what I'm gonna be doing is adding my beads on the right side here. So before I make my next round or stitch in the braid, I'm gonna add my bead and I'm adding it to the very outer, in this case, right one. So what we're gonna then do is literally just do another stitch in the braid in the same way. So this right one now with the bead goes over the next one. And the only difference is we need to make sure that bead stays in that kind of little corner between the other wires, but still goes into the middle. And just slots in there perfectly. And then because we kind of Put it into that little corner it gets trapped in place now on the other side we just do the stitch without a bead so bring the outer one under the next one into the middle make sure that goes over the one that's already been put in the middle from the previous movement there and just kind of try and tighten it up nicely flatten it back out and then what we're gonna achieve doing this is by adding the large bead there, just on the one side, it's gonna eventually gradually kind of add a curve into it naturally, which is why we then do the stitch on the opposite side there. You wanna try and get it a bit tight as well, as tight as you can. So it will kind of tighten up the opposite side to the bead, which will also help the curve being created. But then, that's that stitch done. We immediately move on to the next one. Before you do any movements, add the bead and then continue the exact same movements there. The wire with the bead over the next one and into the middle. On the opposite side, we do the opposite, we bring it underneath and into the middle. So just like this and then cross it over there as well. Flatten everything out and you just keep going like this. And like I said, you can start to gradually see a curve forming as well, which is gonna lay nicely on the neckline. So I now kept braiding here, and you can see we've achieved a nice natural curve because of the beads there, just being added on one side. And you just keep moving your braid around, so obviously you can keep working with it comfortably. But then once you reach to this point here, what I've added in total is 13 beads. Obviously it's up to you how long you really want this and how you want the curve to sit on your neckline. But I've used 13 beads for reference. Then after you've finished adding your beads, you're happy with the length and the shape that you've got, then you just want to do a couple more stitches without beads, just like we did in the beginning. And that is just in the exact same way. Same braiding technique here. Just again, so we have this end to finish off the braid with. So just do about the same amount of stitches as we have right there in the beginning. So now that I've finished the braid, I've removed it from the spring clamp and then all that's left to do really is finish off the ends of the braid. So to do that, what we need to do is get rid of the excess lengths of wire and then also attach our ribbon ends to that so we can obviously attach our chain to the ribbon ends there and start to wear it. So what we need to do is cut off the excess first of all. I'm just gonna work on one end at a time and I'm getting a pair of flush cutters out. So then you can always just use a ribbon end to kind of place it just a bit after that last bead there just to see the spacing where you want it to sit. So you then know where you're gonna cut. I'm gonna take my flush cutters here and then cut straight across. Something like that. Get rid of the excess. Also cut the rest of them off. So there we go. Now I got rid of those excess wires, but then to be able to attach a ribbon end, it's gonna go on top of the ends of the wire there. What I like to do is just kind of add a bit more security into it. So I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers, then just grab hold of it however you feel comfortable. What I like to do is take, grab onto one wire at a time, just right on the end of it. And then this one here is just kind of one that's a bit in the middle. And then put a tiny little bend going in the opposite direction. Just grab onto it there and kind of just flick it in the opposite direction to where it's going. Something like that and then the same 
with the one from the other side. And the reason that I'm doing this is, first of all, to kind of align them if we need to so they fit nicely inside the ribbon end. We don't have any that are longer than the others. But also because this kind of gives a bit more, you could call it friction, because we're going to add glue inside the ribbon end. But if we just had the straight lengths of wire, you can maybe still pull it out over time. So the wire just kind of pulls out from the glue. But if you add these little bends, they'll kind of act as a stopper to not be so easy to just pull out and be a lot more secure. So just put a tiny little bend on each of the wires here, going opposite direction, and then we can also just flatten this out. Just to make sure it'll fit nicely inside the ribbon so there's not too much bulk on it. Because obviously this needs to clamp down on top of it. Then I grab my glue because we're going to add that inside the ribbon end and I'm using the E6000 because it dries clear but also I find it works really well when I'm working with wire so adhering the metal together. I just add a little bit onto a toothpick just so I can then use that to put inside a ribbon end here just up and down the kind of walls you could call it. So just coat it nicely and then, I usually make sure we don't add too much though. The excess that I then have on my toothpick, I usually just make sure to put on the end of the braid here. Just get it right in between the wires, in between the nooks and crannies there. Because then when we put the two pieces together, they're really going to adhere nicely. And the glue is blended in between the wire as well. So now we just need to attach them together and to do that and then just put the ribbon end over the end of the wire. Then I grab some flat nose pliers and then all I want to do now is clamp it down. So make sure it kind of stays in the middle. So I gradually go in and clamp it down a little bit at a time from side to side because then we can still adjust it because as you can see it kind of moves around while we're doing it. And then, when you feel like it's right in the middle, go in and do a final squeeze, and also go in from the sides. And then you attach your ribbon end. Obviously leave this to dry though, so the glue dries nicely so it's gonna stop moving around. Do the same on the other end, and then you can just use those little loops there to attach a chain. So now I've finished off both ends of my braid here, and also attach my chain to those ribbon ends. And I've attached my clasp on the end of the chain there as well, so it's ready to wear. And this is what it looks like. So, it's going to lay lovely on the neckline because we have this natural curve in it. Now what you can just do, I want to mention as well, if you don't quite like how the curve looks after you make your braid, you can always adjust it a little bit so you can just open it up a bit more if you want to or you can tighten it up if it's a bit too open. It's completely up to you and your personal preference. But then that's how you make this a so pretty simple technique, just a four strand braid really. We'll just add the beads on one side. Now do check out the other tutorials for the other pieces in the same set here of jewellery, so the bracelet and the earrings as well. I have tutorials for them, it's going to be links down in the description box below, check that out. And also I have loads of other braiding wire work tutorials on my channel as well if you like that. So, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, thank you so much for watching it, and I'll see you in the next one.